Hey everyone, Isaac here again, and welcome to the second episode of Between Two Cats. There's a lot of great people in the quantum programming open source community that do a great job of promoting open source, getting people involved. And my guest today is a perfect example of how anyone and everyone can get into the open source world. His name is Emiliano Ramirez. He's currently a grad student at the Technical University of Munich and a researcher at IQM. He has a blog post that should be available now called From Zero to Open Source, and he details his path through the open source world from start to where he is now. Beyond just being a good example of what you can do in the open source world, Emiliano has participated in a lot of hackathons like Unitary Hack and QHack, winning a lot of prizes. Anyway, it was a pleasure to speak to Emiliano today. I really hope you enjoy this interview. Go check out his blog post after this video if you'd like. Subscribe to the channel, give this video a like if you like it. And uh, without further ado, here's Emiliano. Yeah, Emiliano, welcome. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice to meet you. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing fine. I, I don't know if you can tell, but like the day is really nice. So I guess it's kind of a pity to be inside, but so um, I'm doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, where, are, where are you joining us from today? Um, Munich. Like you're, you're at uh, TUM. Um, how many years have you been there? So this is my second year of master's, but I did my bachelor's before in Bremen. Right, right. Cool. Do you have plans to do like a, a PhD after this or... Uh, yeah, that's the idea, actually. I have to, well, I'm finishing my thesis in March, like this next March. So I'm currently cool. already starting to look out for PhDs. Nice. Right on, right on. Um, where are you from originally? Um, Guatemala. Oh, really? That's that's super yeah. cool. Right on. Nice. <laughs> nice. So closer to Canada, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, not, not too close. Um, yeah. I... Not that this is like really that close, but um, I've never been further south than like Texas, like Houston, oh. Texas. I had a trip planned right before uh, COVID like hit and uh, it was it was to Mexico and I was just like so excited to go to Latin America. But uh, that just totally got kiboshed and I never like rebooked the trip or anything like that. So um, one day I will get... I will go to that area of the world and I like to look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope so. It's really nice. If you like it and the warm weather, I think it's going to be like super nice for you. And I've actually heard that pretty often, like people telling me like, yeah, COVID messed up my uh, South American trip plan. So like, that's something that I've heard a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So like, let's, let's get into like why we're, why we're here. Um, you've got a blog post coming out soon. It, it should be out actually when this video goes public, but um, oh, okay. if not, um, or if it is, if it is out, I'll put a link in the description for this video. Um, it's called from zero to open source. I love that title, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, lots of people can probably relate to it or, or get inspired from it. So if, uh, if it is out right now, I encourage you to go check it out. Take me back to like zero, maybe not like when you're legit zero, like, you know, like a baby, but <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, how about say like going into high school, like. What were your hopes and aspirations, goals, and that sort of thing at that point in your life? And, and why did you decide to get into physics in particular? Uh, well, actually, that's interesting because back then I didn't really think I was going to like do a PhD or even a master. So like back then I was just really like doing physics competitions and math competitions. And that's why I got into like, I mean, first I was doing math and I just really loved like, I, I don't know, like number theory and combinatorics. Um, then I did physics competitions and that's where I started to like find these, I don't know, the, the thrill of actually using math and physical problems. And yeah, uh, after that, I, I just thought, okay, maybe like it makes sense for me to go into like a physics bachelor's. Um, but yeah, I mean, even during like my first two years of bachelor's, I was still not decided between electrical engineering and physics. Um, but yeah, I think like at, at some point, maybe like on my third year, I just realized that physics was a bit more fun. I had a, that's funny. I had a really similar experience in high school. Um, I was always like pretty good at math. Um, and then it wasn't until my first physics class in like grade 11, um, that I like really saw like, okay, yeah, like this is, this is good. I remember like I, I did like a kinematics test and, uh, it, like I did super well on it and I was like, oh, Okay. Like it was kind of shocking. I was kind of like, oh, okay. Like this is kind of cool, I guess. And yeah, I mean, it, you know, here we are now. I 
went to school for physics and did a master's and blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah. And then like when that happened too, I also did get into like, uh, the extracurricular like competitions and stuff like that. We have in Ontario here in Canada, we have, uh, we have a competition called like the Sir Isaac Newton test or something like that. Okay. Um, I did that. I was, I did horribly. I never did really well at those competitions. Um, there was always like they were, those questions like still to this day are like super hard for me. You know, like any, you can make, you can, you can conceive of many very difficult, uh, like Newton's second law problems. And they, they were pretty much all that. And it was just like brutal. I can totally <laughs> um, agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I did, uh, I did like a, an AP physics class. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of those. They're like, yeah. um, the United, the United States has them there. You can like kind of use them for a university credit. You do them in high school, you just do a test and, and that sort of thing. And that's kind of cool. Yeah. I pretty much had a similar experience to you then. Nice. Um, so while I was in university, you know, I, like I took on computationally motivated projects like when when I wasn't in courses um I could you know take a job somewhere working for a professor doing some you know research getting getting my feet wet in that sort of area um I always found it super 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 intimidating to to get into those things you know I remember like all of my projects that I was in you know you're you're working with grad students and PhD students and stuff like that and uh, they just know so, more, so much more than you. And I always felt like, oh, gosh, you know, like I really need to know more than, than what, I'm, what I actually do know. Um, I, I feel like some of that feeling as a whole, like on the whole for, for people in undergrad doing research in like a, a computational setting, I feel like some of that's dissipating. Generally speaking, that feeling of like, oh, my gosh, this is all overwhelming. I feel like I don't belong here. You know, like textbook imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, so did you experience that in, in undergrad for you or? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be sort of weird to hear of someone that hasn't experienced that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I was so involved in many different like extracurricular projects. I was like, I don't know, as I said, I was taking like both electrical engineering and physics. So I felt like I was doing a lot on the like uh, already in the curriculum. So I was maybe not as involved as I could have. Um, but then of course, like, um, I think I did a summer um, project with a professor, like the one that I en um, ended up doing my thesis with. There, yeah, I mean, I think it was not that bad because I was just with one PhD student because it was during the summer. So there was not so many people around. And I think that helped a lot because the, like the PhD student was like, just really, I don't know, like really nice, like really understanding of like that. I was just a bachelor student. <laughs> so I, I think I was really lucky in that. So probably I skipped a bit on this, like, uh, suffering, like the, uh, like feeling that I was not doing as well as I should have been doing. So, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember, um, my, my, I think my second, uh, like uh, research project in, in undergrad. Um, I, uh, I was working with someone, he's a PhD student. Um, he's one of those uh, like 10 X software developers. I don't know if you've ever heard of that meme, but it's just people who are like insanely good at uh, okay. everything. And yeah, who are just like, you know, they don't, they don't need to study or like anything. They just, they are just like one with the computer. Yeah, like doesn't okay. matter what doesn't matter what the, the the operating system is like doesn't matter what the language is it's just funny like all of that all of the thoughts that come into your brain about like oh gosh like I'm not good enough to be here blah 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 they really are all like self imposed in in well not not a hundred percent all the time I'm sure there's probably some people that feel that uh, they've been in situations where they were actually made to feel that way by somebody else which isn't great but. <laughs> I'd say on the whole, a lot of it is self-imposed and the people that you may feel intimidated by are actually just like super nice and genuine. And yeah, I don't know. I think maybe we assume the worst in people when we should be assuming the best. No, I, I was just about to say that, I mean, based on your description, I would also uh, have like, I think I would have feel also intimidated by kind of that kind of person. <laughs> yeah, like now you're definitely not scared of like 
programming, you know, you're, you're a grad student now. You're on the other end of that. Um, <laughs> I <you're>, hope so. <laughs> you're, <laughs> yeah. Um, you're, you're not scared to, like, contribute to any open source projects, uh, Penny Lane being one of them. And uh, I'm sure you've used plenty of other things in school. Like, what was the thing that got you over the hump? You know, you're saying, like, you had some feeling of like, oh gosh, you know, there's so much to learn. And, and like, what was the thing that got you over the hump that was like, yeah, I can do this. Let's do it. What was that thing? To be quite fair, I think there was not one specific thing that, that like made me feel like, okay, I have already made it over like the fence or something like that. But it was because every time that I felt like, yeah, okay, I, I'm getting like really good at this. Then I just got into like a different like competition or I got to meet different people. And then I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not as good as I thought I was. <laughs> and then like, I think it's just been like a, like a, pro like a process of like constantly, I don't know, try, um, improving. I think, well, well, the first time that I was, um, feeling better, like, or like feeling like that, I was like, you know, already seeing a lot of the results was, I think, um, when we finished top 10 in the penny lane coding challenges from one year ago i was like okay i mean it was like almost 500 teams and we finished top 10 i was like okay we're doing we're doing cool stuff <laughs> um yeah and then i think uh like a lot of different um competitions that follow uh, the the q hack from last year also like this year sorry from this year um but yeah i mean i think like long story short i, I don't think there was like one particular thing that made me feel like, yeah, okay, now I'm over, over that part. I think I tend to agree with you actually, like maybe those feelings still linger, but they like, they're just less and less and less. So probably, you know, I think it's just, a, maybe it's just like a constant battle of like feeling like, oh, you've got so much to go, but you actually do know quite a bit. When I started grad school, um, like a couple years before that was like the really big kind of uh, paradigm shift for like numerical physics people to start doing like machine learning in physics on the archive every day. There was just like too many papers to go through. You know, you just also get to see the volume of people that are out there that actually do know how to program pretty well. You just have to immerse yourself in it and you just have to keep practicing and keep trying. And yeah. Okay. So describe your first experience with contributing to an open source project. Like what was it? Um, what did you do specifically? What were the, uh, what were pros and cons you saw from it? What were some things you like instantly learned that were like, Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. True. I'll do it this way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I talk a bit about it during my um, blog post, but just to like maybe repeat on that. Um, I was so, of the open sourcing like world that like in my head all i had to do like i i just reached out to them on discord i was like hey um there's this thing missing like um so i guess i can mention like what like the um uh, project was like it, it was like this for uh, open qaoa and um i was like just asking them like some for some plotting um function and like okay they were like yeah um we can't um it's not on the roadmap um right now but you can like help us develop it and in my head all i had to do was like to okay like code it make some nice comments and send it to them through discord like i didn't even know anything about like all like how to use git or like through all the whole process i think that that for me was already like a big step like after after um finishing that submission i at least knew how to use like git somehow <laughs> and uh yeah i mean i had m my name already like in an open source project but i think like the most important thing was like to realize that i don't know there's like a big difference between just like doing stuff um within our research group and actually doing like professional software development um yeah i think that was kind of the basics <laughs> like once you had that I guess, taste of that kind of world? Was it just like, I need to keep doing this? Like, it was such a great experience that you just wanted to keep doing it. Like, what was really the thing that was driving you to keep doing it other than just the desire to learn, you know? Like, was it something in particular about your first experience that made you want to continue to do it? Mm, well, 
first of all, I think I was a bit overwhelmed after it finished, after I was like, finally, okay, my name is there, I can rest for a bit. <laughs> uh, it was, of course, nice because, I mean, I guess before that, um, I was only using like NumPy and SciPy, whatever, and like nothing really that I had contributed to. So, of course, it feels nice to, to feel that you're part of the thing that you're like also using and like helping build. I think that's like, a really like strong feeling. Um, but I did um, stop for quite a couple of months after that. I think like it, it was just because it coincided with like some vacations and like starting off a new semester. Um, but of course, like once I had the chance to keep doing that, I think um, one of the big things that I did related to open sourcing was this like the unitary hack. Um, and I think that probably was the thing that was like, okay, like uh, got me really hooked into into open sourcing because I don't know, like if you are like um, complete, like, or like the, if you remember like what the modality of the unitary hack is. Yeah, yeah. It's basically like you get, uh, there's certain issues or features to implement in various open source projects. Uh, Penny Lane uh, participates in this as well. Uh, they're called bounties, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so you just knock off these bounties and you get money. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and I think it's super nice that, I don't know, it sort of uh, teaches you uh, to manage different environments and different like i don't know like um developing pipelines at the same time because i was developing like uh, i was um doing a bounty for penny lane but i was also doing a bounty for um qtip and then yeah like i think like the whole uh like feeling of uh, being contributing to different projects was really cool <laughs> how did you hear about qhack um i I think I was in the newsletter from Penny Lane, uh, and I follow Penny Lane on LinkedIn after the last year code camp. So I was like already really like on the loop, and yeah, I I think it was just like really natural to like just call the same group of people that I did the coding camp with and just tell them like yeah okay let's let's do this. <laughs> oh nice okay okay. Um so the the code camp that was like your first experience with like our coding challenges eh yeah yeah, yeah. okay do you like so i i wrote some of those challenges do you remember ah. any of them were there were there some challenges where you were like cursing whoever wrote it yeah <laughs> i mean i think they're not good coding challenges if you're not cursing the the, the person True. who made them <laughs> um, <laughs> let me try to remember i I think there was one about like I'm not completely sure, but it was related to swap gates probably. Uh, okay, uh, I think this I, probably was this was probably Guillermo, I think. Guillermo Alonso. I could be wrong, but yeah. Okay, uh, okay. That that one I remember like we were like I didn't even want to go for dinner because I was like, okay, we have to finish this before we go for dinner and like we ended up eating like at midnight or something. So <laughs> Nice. Nice, cool. You 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 mentioned like Git. Um, what are a few other tools that everyone should have to like learn in order to like make contributing to something like much much easier? In your opinion? Well, I guess this could really like vary. I personally, um, well, like the uh, I used to use the IDE PyCharm before, so that was like my my go to IDE. IDE. Uh, but now I am more like on VS Code, um, which I think has like really nice, uh, well, I hope this is not some sort of like, or I, it doesn't sound like some sort of advertisement <laughs> for it, but I think it, had, it has like really nice um, tools that you can just like even connect it with your GitHub account. And you can like really see like on your, on your um, ID, you can see the comments that like someone left you on the review. And like, I don't know, I think it just really makes, makes it, super nice to have everything in one place. Um, yeah, besides that, do, 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 I cannot think of anything else, to be honest. <laughs> I, I don't think it's uh, an advertisement to like mention VS Code. <laughs> I think it's pretty, it's pretty ubiquitous amongst like programmers of, of all um, tribes. So yeah, yeah uh, I, I mean, I use it. Um, admit it like so if if the blog's out right now um you can go read it i actually did 
pick up a couple of tricks from your blog about just oh, really? like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like integrating Git more and into, into VS code natively. Cause what I do is I just have a GitHub tab open in, in my mm. browser and okay. <laughs> uh, that just use VS code pretty much as like a glorified fancy text editor. You know, I have like settings <laughs> and stuff like that, but I really haven't dived into it that much, but, uh, yeah, some stuff that you mentioned in your blog did actually speed things up for me. So that's really Thank nice, you. actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> <Yeah>. to help. <laughs> this segment is called Random Sampling. It's just going to be a bunch of random questions, um, pretty much unrelated to physics entirely. But um, okay. yeah, just, just some fun questions here. All right. I'm scared. <laughs> so. Oh, no, no, nothing, nothing scary. Actually, maybe the last one's a little controversial, but it's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Um, do you enjoy bread? Mm, the integral bread? Yeah. The, like the brown, healthy one. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What's your favorite spread to put on it? Like butter, Nutella. jam, whatever. I'm, I'm a big uh, sweet tooth, so Nutella for sure. <laughs> Dude, 100% Nutella team. Let's go. Nutella yeah. for me as well. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. On, Love yeah, it. Nutella, n Nutella all the way. There's no question. Like, it's not even close. I'll put it on, like, pancakes, waffles. I put that on everything. Like, anything. Anything that's, like, a pastry that I can put a spread on, Nutella. 100%. I totally agree. But you have to toast your now, bread, though, because I feel like it doesn't taste as nice if it's not toasted. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it has, it has to be toasted. Not like crunchy toasted, but like just a little toasted. You know, like, like on, level on the two. verge of being. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a level two. Uh, that's where <laughs> we are on the same wavelength here, man. <laughs> now, do, do, for you, does it have to be the brand name Nutella or can it be like another chocolate spread? I have tried other brands, so I like to, you know, like be a bit flexible, but I, I, I keep going back to Nutella, so. Yeah. Word, hundred percent. We are, <laughs> we are, we are one the same. Is there a Penny Lane feature you wish was available but isn't? Hmm. I'm not sure what are the like the latest uh, updates on like the new like uh, version. Um. So I'm afraid of saying something that is already out there. <laughs> Otherwise, I can just say like, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with. What there is out there. <laughs> it could be something like super small. It could be like you want to be able to like put all of you, like if you want to put like a Hadamard gate on like every qubit instead of like looping over um, all your qubits, it could just be like you give it a list of wires and it puts a Hadamard on all of, or I don't know. It could be something simple like that or. You know, actually, now that I remember, something that I always struggle like when I when we're doing these competitions, especially because we are like on the clock, it's I, I maybe it's just me that I haven't found a way of doing it, but I really would like to be able to print the circuit like at intermediate steps because like you know like how you uh, I don't, there's a way of doing it if 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 you have it like under the um, um, decorator like for the like the quantum function and everything, but I haven't been able to like to do it nicely, like to see the parameters, like as theta and all the stuff. I, I have to bind the parameters and then it, it prints in this like kind of like, um, I don't know, like uh, really rudimentary like uh, lines and dots. So you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, you can, uh, you can, like there are different drawing styles. Like, so like the little, the, the very simplistic, like terminal character-y kind of, thing that you're talking about that's just like if you print qml.draw of a circuit um there's another function called draw mpl and that'll like right. give you there's like a penny lane style that actually just came out in the in the latest release oh, okay. um yeah yeah so it's like got the penny lane colors on it and stuff like that and it looks it's got like the sketch kind of style that looks cool um okay. okay but no interesting feedback cool thank you very much maybe i'll take that to the dev team and we'll see what we can do <laughs> um okay next question if you were reincarnated as an animal what would you choose like what animal would you be oh that's a good question <laughs> um i feel inclined to say koalas i don't know why i i i always find them really funny <laughs> koalas 
Interesting. I think I'd want to be something that's like still very self-aware. So like an okay. elephant or like a dog or like, uh, you know what I mean? Like something that's still like very intelligent. I don't know how okay. intelligent koalas are. I really don't. I, th I think they're not quite smart because also you really quite literally have to like almost feed them or like, I, I, I have read somewhere that they, it's kind of uh, common for them to starve. <laughs> But I don't know. I still. Oh, like. no, you're right. Yeah. Because they only eat one thing, right? They eat like eucalyptus leaves or something like yeah, that. Right? Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> I mean, I still want to be a koala. <laughs> That's hilarious. They are cute. I, I will give you that. Um, okay. Now, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but there is, um, like, I think maybe like last week or a couple weeks ago in September, uh, in the Mexican Congress, there was like this alien that they presented and it I looks like memes about it. <laughs> yeah 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 so like i don't know do you, how do you feel about that do you think it's real or fake i didn't go deep into that uh, every time like i i hear like the word aliens i'm like yeah okay in a couple of weeks like they're gonna um prove that it was wrong i can't like kind of like this thing of like the room temperature superconductivity i was like yeah okay. okay i mean seems nice but let's say like um after a couple of people look into it after a couple of weeks it'll probably be disproven so i am on the same boat regarding that <laughs> i like so 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 me too but um it's been a it's been a little while now and like i don't think that the i could be totally wrong here i don't think the jury's out on this thing being real or fake or not so I don't know. And like, you know, I'll put on my tinfoil hat. Maybe there's powers that be that want it to be fake or something. I don't know. <laughs> there's been a lot of funny memes on it, though. There's a show called Is It Cake or Not or something like that. I don't know uh -huh. if you know the show. I, I've seen some and videos like if it's like a cake and then like they, like um, they just like a bite out of it. And it turns out that it was like actually a cake, even though it looked like a computer <laughs> or something. It's just a cake. Uh, QHack 2024, by the time this video goes live, the save the date, like the actual dates for QHack should be, should be released. Um, okay. But it will be, in, if not, it will be in February sometime in 2024. Um, will you be participating in QHack 2024? I have to gather again the team because um, for all the other competitions, I was, like, I was like trying to gather like some friends and everything. And now we already have like a solid team. So I just want to make sure if they're like, you know, up for the challenge again. Nice. Um, are, so the uh, last year you won, I think, like the NVIDIA challenge. Um, yes. Is it the same group of people you're with that you won the NVIDIA challenge with or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, it was the same. I think like the the core was the same from the very first like competition from like the coding camp and like from Sweet. the coding challenges of the Q hack and the Q hack itself. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um. Yeah. What are What are your future plans too? Like, so I know you said you're you maybe looking to do a PhD, but like beyond that, like where do, where do you see yourself? I know you also do some. Are you still at IQM? Like, are you doing research at IQM still or? Okay. Yeah. So I'm doing half time and like at IQM and I'm also um, right. finishing my thesis. Yeah. Um, well, that's a deep question. <laughs> like what, where do you see your, yourself in five years? That's an interesting yeah. question. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I want to do a PhD. I want to like, um, I don't know, get a bit deeper into tensor networks, which is like the thing that I like the most. Um, I want to, of course, like keep coding because I've gotten really fond of it. Uh, I don't know. Um, I see myself, of course, like still like doing research in a couple of years. Um, but I don't know. I honestly, I think for the for the past few years, I kind of set myself goals for like six months or one year, and I don't really think so far away. Um, so far away because I think COVID taught us that like a lot of things can change. Uh, so yeah, like so far, I think like, I, I haven't really like thought that far. Yeah. When I kind of was thinking about the same question when I was like finishing up grad school, um, I really didn't know the answer either. And <laughs> I just, I just applied to Xanadu just to see what would happen. And, uh, you know, I mean like I, like I genuinely wanted to work here, but I was just, you know, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll send a couple feeler applications out. And uh, yeah, it worked out. So yeah, it's 
sometimes you just go with the flow and do what's right. And yeah, it doesn't have to be like a rigorous five year plan or whatever, right? That's not life. Life just doesn't work like that. Yeah. I mean, life is a chaotic process. So <laughs> yeah. you just have to go with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, any last bits of advice for anybody looking to get into like open source software? You know, there's probably people watching that like they have absolutely no idea where to start, but you know, they, they find quantum and programming or quantum computing interesting. Any last bits of advice for those people? Uh, yeah, that's also my last section of the blog. <laughs> like a kind of like a list of like a short advice. Um, I really like this phrase that I put, and I, I'm pretty sure I should quote it because it's not mine. I read it somewhere that it's like, you you um, you don't have to be an expert to start, but you have to start to be an expert at some point, you know? Um, yeah, I think if I hadn't like uh, taken this like uh, opportunity one year ago, I wouldn't have done anything that I have done like in like the last 12 months. So I think it's just like, um, you shouldn't be scared of... Uh, not being up to the level of where you where you think you should be to start doing something i think like you're just gonna get that eventually and yeah it's just about learning through mistakes along the journey awesome cool that's uh it's a good place to end it um thanks so much for uh for joining me emiliano it was it was a pleasure um for, for everybody inviting. interested yeah um for anybody interested in learning more about emiliano uh go check out his blog post um, you can look at his uh, GitHub profile as well. I'll put uh, links for that in the description. Thanks so much for joining us again, Emiliano. It was a pleasure and uh, best Thank of luck you. with your studies. Um, maybe five years from now, we can meet up again and see where you're at. And we can look back at this and s see if your your predictions were, were right or anything like that. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Thank you so much for inviting me again. And it was it was fun. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. I don't use Twitter so much because I think it's also dying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. It's kind of, it's kind of <laughs> sad. It's just like a slow trickling death, I feel. But we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. Still so many people use it.